Got home last night. I noticed a little bit of weakness. And today, a lot of weakness. And I know where we're at. We know where we're at. She was doing really well. But, but here we are. I'm gonna keep talking about it because I find myself these days in a place where if I don't talk about it, I push it out of my mind. Isn't that funny? We're gonna see what tonight brings and try to sit here. Cause it's kind of hard to sit here. It's time to spend time because I can feel like um, we're running low on that. Okay. So I knew that when I started this thing, uh, it was going to be really hard to begin it, and it was going to be really hard to end it. And here we are. Right after I shot that last piece um, with Caroline in the bed, I could feel it. You know, I felt Caroline take a turn um, right then. And um, sure enough, that night she had what looked like sort of a mini stroke. All of a sudden, legs weren't really working. Getting up and down from the couch was a sincere problem. Within an hour or so, we were using a scarf, like you usually use for a dog, to put under their belly and help them walk around, help her to the litter box. It was out of nowhere almost, but I saw it in that moment anyway. We had our house call vet ready to come the next morning uh, because clearly we had reached a moment. And I will always say never on their worst day. And I didn't want this to be her worst night or her worst morning and Minu and I were in unison on, on this one. And then I, it was morning and um, I was actually writing to my sister because who was asking how she was and I was saying just not great and all of a sudden she was walking and she was, you know, a little tender but then that started to pass and then suddenly she was eating and pooping and peeing and after Minu had s sat up all night with her I took over at about 5 a.m. She was back. And but within an hour, just walking around like who she was. And we canceled. <laughs> and we had the day go on. Later on that, that day, and they're all bleeding together, so I, I can't tell you when was when. Was it? All of a sudden, she started acting like she had a urinary tract infection. She just kept going to the litter box. And first time she peed, the second time there was nothing there. Third time it was just a drop, but it was just, I, I sit, I get up, I go to the litter box, nothing. I get up, I go to my bed, I squat, nothing, maybe a drop. You know, We had pee pads all over uh, everything at that point. It went on all night and it was the worst night because I just felt so horrible for her. Gave her a little bit of something uh, to sort of relax the nerves and relax her body. Did not work. She just walked right through it like, like almost like a zombie. Just sort of, it's not going to stop me. I might be wobbly, but it's not going to stop me. Another long night. Me was staying up most of the night, me taking over in the morning. And she finally got to sleep finally and slept and this was going to be the day and Caroline will always tell us when she's not comfortable because she'll just turn to the wall when she's sitting she'll just turn to the wall and she had turned to the wall and she was finding corners and as the day went on you just wanted her to sleep you know I'm trying to put all the, all the pieces together and they're all jumbled up, but I don't care. I took her outside. Minu had taken her for a little spin around the backyard. We don't ever let our guys outside. Outside, they, they hang out here on the catio. And, and, and Caroline loved the catio until about a year, maybe two ago. She just stopped. She just didn't 
want to be out here anymore, which is fine. <laughs> we weren't going to make her do it. So Minu had taken her out onto the grass just to take a spin around. And she didn't really <laughs> care for it, but she liked being carried around. And then I took her out here, and we enjoyed the sun together, and we just hung out a little bit. And I tried to make sure I was with her. Now this wasn't, this was the day before all this went down. That day, that last day, I, I came out of the shower to relieve Minu from couch duty. And I'm looking around and I don't see Caroline. And she, she had her spot, but was told you about her spot, couldn't find her. Looked all over the place. I mean, where the, where the hell is she going? <laughs> it's not a big house. You know, where is she going to go? I look down, and she's coming in from the catio. She's just walking in the door. She had been taking her own spin. As if to say, I know. I'm just taking a look around. <laughs> Saying goodbye. I know. I'm done. I'm tired. It's awfully confusing because as tired and uncomfortable as she would look one minute, she'd look like Caroline the next minute. But you got to stick with what you know. And I knew this wasn't her worst day, but it would be tomorrow. So we came out here when the uh, vet came. We hadn't really had it planned out. Minu made this beautiful area for her right in front of the, of the fireplace had arranged flowers and a really sweet bed. And we were all going to sit, usually where she got her acupuncture, because we knew that when the doctor came over, that was what she was used to, that spot with her. But right beforehand, I took her back out here for another, you know, hold and stroll. And, uh, and there was this beautiful patch of sun. And we sat in the sun. And within... 30 seconds of watching the birds right, right over here, you know. We just, um, we came over here, right here, and we watched the birds together. And I was just stroking her, and that purr. Now again, purrs can mean a lot of things, right? They can mean contentedness, they could be self-soothers, they could um, be something to help reduce pain. I don't think she was in pain. I really don't. That was it. In that moment you say, how lucky am I? How lucky are we that on this really beautiful spring day, I mean, it could be the middle of winter, it could be raining, it could be cold, but it's not. It's a beautiful April spring afternoon. And the sun is hitting right here, and her fur was nice and warm, and it was time. So we, the doctor gave her just a little, a little to take the edge off, and, and within seconds she was just sleepy, sleepy. She was pretty much out. I couldn't let her go. I mean, you know, physically, I just wanted to carry her. So we sat here, and we started thinking, okay, what, what, <laughs> best laid plans. We just think, okay, what is the best place? And we came over here to the couch, and we sat there, and there's a table right over there, and she was on the table, and... And we let her go. And it was peaceful. And I think I'm conditioned to stay as present as possible. Different people have different philosophies on this. I don't want her to think that there's a thing wrong. I don't want her to think that I need help. <laughs> because they will do that. I just want her to know that, that it's a beautiful moment and a beautiful day and you're feeling, you're feeling beautiful as 
whatever your body has dealt is not important anymore. And it was Minu and I and the doctor and our close friend Nicole and <laughs> and Minu brought over Audrey and Scarlett, our chicken, was there. Uh, everybody else was doing their own thing. And it took a second, really. And one thing that I've always been able to, to know is the second they leave us. They, meaning human or animal, I just know. And I, the second she left, I felt it. And fell completely apart. And in that moment, you go from being caretaker and <laughs> cheerleader and parent and it's all going to be okay and all of what we've gone through together over the past three and a half months comes to an end and it becomes about us, us, the humans, and this amazingly incredible rush of equal parts pain and gratitude, just this incredible gratitude because I felt her, I felt her joy, meaning that the night before could feel the joy of energy calling back, saying, okay, this experiment of body is, is done. There's joy to be had somewhere else. And we could both feel it at separate times, but, but in that moment, bam, I just, I've, I've, I, oh, thank, thank you. I'm free of this thing. And she's gone, and she's gone. And, I, and I've always noticed that when animals leave us, energy-wise, because their attachment to the experience is to some degree, and in the big scheme of things, momentary. They live in the moment. We, we all have said that. They live in the moment a lot better than we do. And she lived in that moment, and she died in that moment, and she left in that moment. And like I said, it was beautiful, and it was this. And it is this. It's the same thing. I mean, look, it's only not even 48 hours ago, so it's still, you know, you're, settl you're settling into a moment. And uh, I'm still in this, in this moment. And, it's, and it feels really weird because I'm in this moment with you. And I still feel very weird about it. And there have been a hundred moments in three and a half months where I have thought, this is a stupid thing. The anger and the, and the, and the confusion and saying the wrong things and wanting to take them back and whatever and then putting it out there for you. I just, I thought, I'm gonna take this whole thing down. The good thing is, I can take it back. You know, the, the, the thing about doing TV, all this, you can't take it back. <laughs> it's out there, it's out there. I see things that I said in 2011 for the whole world and their cousin to see and I wish to hell I could take it back because it was dumb and I can't, but, but I could, so I should. And I haven't, because I've been told that there's value to this. But there's a, there's, there's a... Oh my God, I just, I see that's the thing. That's the thing, I just thought I saw her. She, has, <laughs> she hasn't taken that spin around the catio in a long time, and I just thought I saw her. Or maybe I did. Anyway, uh, you, get, you have to get used to that part. One of those spots, you, what, you always had to look out because, you know, you could trip over her. And right now, when it's early in the morning, I 
I'm going to take a walk. Let's take a walk. Let's take a walk. I'm not kidding you. I, I really do feel incredibly grateful. I really, really do. I clearly don't sound like I do in this moment, but I do because I got to have this incredible journey with her. You know, when, when she came to us, you know, when she was a little baby, and uh, my girlfriend at the time didn't like the name Caroline. I know she didn't like it because I had flown that name by uh, a bunch of times. And I was really loving, like, you know, we had Valoria at the time and she was named after the Pixie song. And the idea of th this idealized name, you know, from a favorite song, I thought would be really, really nice. But here is where I was smart, was because I told her that it, it was because of Sweet Caroline by, by Neil Diamond, which is a great song, but not my song, and not something that I cared about. But she loved that song, so I, but for me, it was the Beach Boys' Caroline No. That's who Caroline is named after. And the other night, we were trying to figure out exactly how old she was, which a lot of times when you're adopting a foster kitten who was born uh, in a gully somewhere on the South Bay, I went looking through whatever records I had, and there it was, a piece of paper written by her foster mom with the exact day that she was born. I think it said Calico Kitten. <laughs> and it was April 20th. 2008 and it is April 11th I think and she would have been 16 she was born 16 years ago minus a little more than a week and wow what a trip what a trip the challenges that, that Caroline overcame that now I teach classes when I teach classes about overcoming challenge I talk exactly about her and she will always live on and aren't I lucky because I get to teach about about things like overcoming challenge and and the 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 wallflower and there she is she's part of that isn't that amazing how lucky am i how lucky are we minu and and caroline were just peas in a pod and as much as caroline loved me she really loved Minu. And in these last three and a half months, they were inseparable. And every time I would look over, there was Caroline either looking at Minu, like this loving gaze, or she was trying to figure out where the hell Minu just went. Whatever vulnerability Caroline felt uh, over the past couple of months during this journey, uh, this final leg of this journey, she was okay as long as she could find Minu. And how lucky we are that that was here for her. How lucky are we when the doctor said you have days to weeks because she has an eight centimeter mass on her pancreas. We don't even know anything really about pancreatic cancer in cats. We don't, I don't know. And, and all of the stuff that I shared with you early on, I really thought we were in for a short trip. And I might as well share that trip it was three and a half months ago. I mean, it was more than that. Really, on her 16th birthday, right around there, it would be four months, four months since that day. How unbelievable is that? I know, you, you know, some of you guys might be thinking that I'm just like trying to talk myself into gratitude. I am not talking myself into gratitude. That I can promise you. The day she passed, I had a really hard time staying there. I was not happy with anybody. I was not happy with the way the day was going. I was not happy with the process. I wasn't happy with the, the talking, with, with voices. I wasn't talk, happy with the exact moment and the exact the way this was supposed to go. And I wasn't, and then she was gone and I just, and I was just there. There is nothing like profound pain to bring you right back to the moment. You know how, how uh, one of those things to prevent uh, obsessing or future tripping or whatever is to take a rubber band, bang, you know? 
in that moment when she was released. Bam! And now with you, with by myself, with Minu, with the rest of our guys, I'm just trying to put it all together and imagine what the rest of my life is going to be with Caroline taking her place with the others that occupy that place of gratitude and grief who pop up sometimes years and years later and make you just freaking step away from whatever you're doing and just weep your eyes out and then you just go on with your day. She takes her place with them and the first part of mourning, mourning is telling you, I am in mourning right now because I'm doing something, you know, whatever ceremonial some things that we do. You know, the last thing we did before we went to bed, Bina was so on top of it, made this like makeshift shrine where her perfect spot was by the, the fireplace, made this perfect little place for her to die. She didn't die there, but she took that and made it into this makeshift shrine. We took this picture that we, that, that Minu had just taken either that day or the day before on one of Caroline's jaunts out here or to the catio. And it was just such a beautiful picture. And it was that one of those pictures where, you know, 10 years, 20 years down the line, you're going to be looking at that picture. It was that picture. And we just took that picture, found a frame in a closet, printed it out, so obviously it wasn't going to look perfect, put it in front of the fireplace. She found these votive candles, the electric votive candles. I don't even know where these came from. Arranged those flower petals, and there we have it. In all of the imperfection of this last chunk of time, it's perfect, you know, the perfect reminder. It's a perfect rubber band up. Oh, She's no longer here, she's there. Perfect moments happen whether you want them to happen at a certain time or not. Imperfect moments happen the rest of the time. <laughs> you know that old saying, we make plans and God laughs? That's most of the time. But when we let God or the universe do what they want, then perfect moments happen. Two things that I will say before I say goodbye to this. Uh, number one is this. I hope that for anybody who watches this who's never had the honor of life with an animal and being chosen by an animal to be trusted and to be brought in and to be vulnerable with and to have a relationship with, for anybody who hasn't done that yet, Please don't let this be a deterrent to that. Whether they've got four legs, three legs, two legs, eight legs, it doesn't matter. You're gonna, we're gonna lose people. We're going to feel grief in our life. There is no love without loss, but the love is so worth every minute of this, every second, even the, the moments over the past couple of months where we had to deal with this and go through this, this thing that I, I wouldn't trade a moment of her life. Just like the one, all the ones that you deeply love make your life worth living. And just as she assumes her place <laughs> and we are left here to trudge on. I still wouldn't trade a minute of it for blissful ignorance. Not a moment. And I just, I, I don't want anyone out there to be like, man, I don't want any part of this. <laughs> I don't want any part of this. I, I'm fine. I'm fine. You take your... <laughs> your mystical relationship with your animals and you can have it and I'll just watch it on YouTube. Please don't do that. It is magical. It's magical. And just like it takes a risk to fall in love with a human and to be vulnerable with a human and to share your deepest, darkest with a human 
and to experience moments, moments of pure joy with a human. It, it is the same. So please don't put off because, like I said, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And the second thing I have to say, I have three things. <laughs> the second thing is I just want to thank everybody who along the way, uh, all of you who have watched this, keep reminding me that I shouldn't erase it. I shouldn't bring it down. I shouldn't, th that it's okay to do this. And for that, um, I'm really grateful because the process of documenting all of it has, has changed me, will, will inform how I go through it next time. And it has made me uh, much more present about Caroline, her irreplaceable being, and also the way I handle grief. Anticipatory grief is such a tricky, tricky thing. Keep catching myself, calling myself an idiot, or, or heartless, or why didn't I do this for her when I could have, and, and why did I just say this to the, why did I just storm out of the room? Why am I recording all this? What, what, you're, you're too big for your britches, you're, you're a, a child, you're a moron. <laughs> Get all that out, you know, when you say things, they go from being this all-consuming whirlpool to just palm-sized. They're palm-sized. I give that to you. And by giving it away, um, as we say in recovery, I keep what I have by giving it away. So thank you for your amazingly kind words. Mino and I have together read them for the gifts that you've sent us. I, I do not for one hot second take for granted uh, the fact that I have you and what a lucky, lucky human being I am for that. Not for a second, ever. So, and then the last thing I have to say is I really miss her. And it sucks. And I'm going to go and um, try to find some beauty in the day. Think about the journey we had together. Because 16 years, man. That's a long moment, and I miss her, and I love you guys. Go put some love on who you got. Put some love on who you got. Snap that band. Be present. We have one piece of a journey together here and the other over there. So um, put some love on who you got here and who you got there, and uh, light, love, mojo. Take care, everybody.